Hello, dear viewers. Today I am bringing you all along for a full day in the life with my husband and our animals. We will be sharing little nuggets of biblical encouragement mixed in with the chicken feed recipe and barn chores. So let's jump in. Hello, I'm Emily, a wife and a caretaker with my husband of our many farm animals. Hello, I'm Trevor, her husband, and we welcome you to our little Dexter homestead. Betsy really loves the chicken, and the chicken don't mind her. Yeah, she just come and check. Hey, is there anything in there, Betsy? Hey, is there anything? Let's see, I think they're all up. See if they want to come out when it's cold outside. It's not that cold. Maybe they'll want to come out. Hi, girls. Hi, everyone. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Today we are going to show you how to make fermented chicken feed. Yes. So uh, this is one thing I've been doing with our chickens is that I've been doing some fermented uh, chicken feed. And um, why? Well, it just helps them with their immune system and it just helps them to digest better. And I just like to give them uh, a bit of that just because it, it makes a different flavor in their food and they really enjoy it. So the way we do that is that we um, we will pour on in there about two cups of the chicken feeds. You can use any, any chicken feed that you have. Uh, if you have organic, that's even better. Um, and if not, then that's okay. So Trevor is gonna help me to do that. And we have our little assistant here simply because it's not human food that we're doing, it's uh, for chicken, so she's allowed to be at the table with us. So there we go. So this, I like to do it into a jar like this simply because uh, it will expand and you'll be able to see it. So, but um, yeah, so this, this is the chicken feed. And then one thing that we know that they really love is this um, black, Black oil sunflower seeds. Yes, so they really love and enjoy that kind of, of seed. So we will add that to our mix. That's it. You, you can do the recipe that you want. Uh, this is what I normally do. And then uh, I know that they also really enjoy the cranberry. We've seen it in one of our videos. So we will um, maybe pour maybe half of it and we'll see how it goes. And we'll go from there. Do it all. Yeah, might as well. Perfect. So that that's a lot. It seems like it's a lot, but Trevor, do you mind like shaking it? Because I know it's, it will go down a little bit why I want it to be packed and it needs to be yeah it needs to be packed but we need to leave at least a good inch or two at the top because it will expand and uh, it will also ferment after we do that we will pour the water up to up to here so we want to leave about about this from about like three quarter of an inch to an inch at the top so uh, that we leave some air. So I'm just gonna leave that to you. Now you, you wanna go up all the way because we're gonna leave this as a, yeah, a little bit more. That should be okay. Thank you. All right, so then now we're just going to mix it all, all up so it's it gets wet and I must admit that this is a lot we might have to switch uh, the pot depending on how much it expands but we'll see it needs to be covered that like the whole thing needs to be covered with water 
just because otherwise it can turn rotty like and this is when it gets rotten it's not good and you don't give that to your chicken it just needs to ferment okay thank you so much so what we'll do is that we'll leave it uh, just on the counter for three to four days and we'll monitor it and if it needs to burp a little bit we'll make it burp because it makes a fermentation and then we're going to give uh, some of that to our chicken Okay, so here, just an update. This has been about a day uh, and a few hours. So it's starting to ferment. So you can see all the bubbles that is that is forming up. Now I'll we'll probably just start to give it to the chickens tomorrow. So I'll give uh, a few tablespoon to 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 them. So yeah, so it's overflowing, but it's working. You know, the other day, my husband Trevor and I were just wondering, like, questioning how, what it is to really serve, to be a servant. And we went through some scriptures and then we started to think a bit more and then the homestead came into our mind. You know, as, as farmers, we need to get up in the morning, we need to, to every morning, and we need to come and clean them, we need to feed them. Uh, we they we are the servants of our animals they give us much in return however we are servants but you know what we do it with love we do it because we love them we do it because this is what we love to do and this is what it is also with the lord it, sh it should be that we wake up in the morning you no know, we we get ourselves ready uh, by reading the scriptures and then uh, go and serve Him. When we come to the barn, you know, with this uh, joy and this love for our animals, and it should be the same thing with joy and love for our Lord. So really, when I think of the homestead, I really think of how we can be serving the Lord even much more. And uh, yeah, they give us much more, just like the Lord gives us so much also in return. And we're not doing it for, to get in return, but this is the blessing of it. So do as much as you can to serve Him. And if you don't belong to Him, then seek Him, search for Him, and He will let Himself found. And it gives a purpose to be a servant for the Lord Jesus Christ. When you think about God, you think about the Almighty, the Master of the Universe, the Creator of all things. You don't think necessarily of a humble person, you know, that lowly servant working for someone else. But yet, when Christ Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ, came to earth as a humble human being, He came to serve. He set an example for us, and we see that in Matthew 20, where it says that you know, He came not to be served, but to serve. And we are to follow that example of being a servant. We were supposed to be a servant for God, and we're supposed to be here to serve our fellow man. We see numerous times in the Old Testament with Abraham, Jacob, Isaac, and others, you know, his prophets, of those being servants of the Lord, but also in the New Testament, we see it as well with Paul and John and James, you know, them being referred to as servants of Christ. So as believers, so as followers of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
We are to be a faithful servant. We are to follow His example every day. And we can be thankful that He never gives us more than we can handle and that He is there with us and for us. You know, through Christ, I can, do all, you know, I can do all things through Christ, God who strengthens me. Well, you know, sometimes we can feel overwhelmed too. We can feel that, you know, I have so much to serve. You know, yes, we have to serve our Lord, but also those around us. We, um, and what I do often is that I'll go to the Lord and I'll just come empty and say, Lord, I don't have the energy. I don't have the capability to do it. And, and only through Him that I'm able to, to have the strength to be this, this wife, to be this mother for our animals, to be this daughter for my parents and, uh, you know, this co-worker or whatsoever. I, I truly go to Him. It's impossible uh, to do it alone. And, um, yeah going empty and asking the Lord, give me your daily bread and your living water that I may be able to do it. And Galatians 6, 9 says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Well, this is it for us this week. And until next time, we pray blessings upon you and yours. And whatever you do, be a shining light. Bye for now. Say hi to the camera. Yeah. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs>